This will be a video where we look at something that has important real-world implications for a lot of people, specifically GMOs. GMO is an acronym for genetically modified organisms and humans have been genetically modifying organisms for a long time. Originally, organisms were modified by artificial selection. Humans would choose which traits are passed on to future generations by selecting which members got to reproduce. Artificial selection has resulted in dogs being bred from gray wolves and broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, and kale being made from mustard weed. Today, modifying organisms is much more direct. Now we can insert genes directly into organisms and for that reason, we are going to refer to organisms genetically modified by direct gene insertion as transgenic. A popular transgenic organism is Escherichia coli, which is used to make insulin for diabetics. Bacteria can be used to make a wide variety of biochemical products, including the hepatitis B vaccine, human growth hormone, and interferons. Many people also buy transgenic organisms as pets, the most popular of which is glowfish. Glowfish are fish of various species, including zebrafish, tetras, and tiger barbs, that have been given a gene for fluorescence that comes from either jellyfish, corals, or sea anemones. Originally used to detect pollution in waterways, these fish can now be found in local pet stores across the United States. But how exactly do you make transgenic organisms? Well, there are multiple ways. For instance, biologists could put the DNA in a virus and then have the virus infect a host, transferring the DNA. An example of this is using the retroviral lentivirus to transfer genes to animals. When retroviruses enter the cell, they use an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to create DNA from its single-stranded RNA template. The DNA is transferred into the host's DNA and transcribed along with the host's other genes, meaning that the host makes proteins using the virus's DNA. Or, biologists can insert the necessary genes into a bacterium, which can infect the target organism. This works for agrobacterium, which is usually pathogenic to plants, but is very useful for transferring genes. Or, biologists could just insert the genes directly into the target organism using a very small syringe or a gene gun. Now, you have a general background on GMOs, so why is there a controversy regarding them? Well, GMOs aren't just being used as pets or for making medicines. They're also being used in the production of food. Potatoes, corn, rice, soybeans, bananas, much to the chagrin of Ray Comfort. And over 60% of commercial crops are genetically modified. So the question is, are GMOs any more or less harmful than their non-GMO counterparts? Various studies have been conducted on the question, including the 2012 paper, Assessment of the Health Impact of GM Plant Diets in Long-Term and Multi-Generational Animal Feeding Trials, a literature review, that says, quote, Results from all the 24 studies do not suggest any health hazards and, in general, there were no statistically significant differences within parameters observed. The studies reviewed present evidence to show that GM plants are nutritionally equivalent to their non-GM counterparts and can be safely used in food and feed." Close quote. But if GMOs are just as nutritious as normal crops, then why use them? The reason is that GMOs allow farmers to grow more crops without fear of insects eating the plants or poisoning the plants with herbicides. Genetically modified corn and cotton contain insecticidal genes from the bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis, and soybeans have been given genes that make them tolerant of the herbicide glyphosate. So, are organizations that have investigated the usage of the crops for or against them? Well, a statement by the American Association for the Advancement of Science Board of Directors has said that, quote, the World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, the British Royal Society, and every other respected organization that has examined the evidence has come to the same conclusion. Consumed foods containing ingredients derived from GM crops is no riskier than consuming the same foods containing ingredients from crop plants modified by conventional plant improvement techniques. Close quote. So, Using GMOs is just as safe as regular crops while having the added benefit of producing more crops. It's a win-win. Then what is the public reaction to GMOs? Unfortunately, the public has been less than positive. 52% of Americans believe GMOs are unsafe to eat and 13% are unsure of the crop's safety. 
93% of Americans say the government should label all GMOs, and 57% said they'd be less inclined to buy foods labeled GMO. But why? We know that GMOs aren't any more harmful than normal crops and allow a greater yield. The answer is unfortunate. As microbiologist Kevin Bonham points out, quote, We're hopelessly behind on public understanding of these issues, and there are many real concerns about our agricultural economy. Close quote. But you know now that GMOs aren't harmful. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.